Let's bring in our panel. Peter McGoran, former minister in the Howard government and now at Bondi Partners. Simon Banks, former Labor advisor, now managing director at Hawker Britain. Gentlemen, great to see you both. Peter, what have you made of, of Jim Chalmers' uh, essay? 6,000 words. It's a, a pretty lengthy analysis of where he sees the economy. Uh, it's copped a bit of flack from various quarters, but lapped up by others. What's your read? It's just staggering hubris. He's been there five minutes and suddenly he thinks he can reshape capitalism and the markets. In other words, it's same old formula. Uh, big, big government, market intervention, red tape, regulation. Uh, and, and secondly, the best advice anyone could give Mr Chalmers is go back to basics. The, the Federal Treasurer has three levers over the economy, fiscal policy, monetary policy and wages policy. And on all three, he has immense challenges and he cannot say that he has mastered and secured the sustainability of the economy on any of those three bases. Fiscal policy, the pressures the budget's facing, and, 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 and I understand and have sympathy for the government on this, NDIS, uh, aged care, defence. Had, had he not spent tens of billions of dollars on that, on monetary policy. Well, we know interest rates are keep going up in response to inflation. It's, an, it's a dog chasing its tail in effect. And wages policy, enormous pressures to raise the minimum, minimum wage uh, rate to count uh, and take into uh, account uh, inflation. And we now have the CFMEU promising uh, or threatening uh, a wages campaign. I'm sorry, this is just vainglorious behaviour. Simon Banks, your assessment of the, this intervention, it's not the first. We've seen it before with Kevin Rudd and Wayne Swan laying out their, their uh, values, their, their vision. Now, Jim Chalmers. Yeah, in fact, in fairness, uh, you know, Jim's written books before, which I think uh, some of your viewers might want to go away and have a read as well, because what he said in this article in the monthly is entirely consistent with what he's been arguing with throughout his life. And I think you can see from... Peter's reaction that he stirred up a bit of a hornet's nest and like what's he arguing for he's ask, arguing for capitalism with a purpose that capitalism actually has to work for all Australians for all global citizens and at, at a time when we're fracturing uh, as citizens within our country and more broadly when the power of despotic governments are increasingly exercising uh, their power over their citizens we need to make democracy and the economy work for ordinary Australians. And that's all that Jim's saying. And, in fact, if you look at the proposals that he's linked to it in terms of policy things, they're about getting the private sector to invest in things that are important for Australia's economic future, the green energy transformation, and you were just speaking to Tim uh, about that, Kieran, but also in housing, where we know we've got a massive shortfall in housing stock at the moment, particularly for people on low and middle incomes. And we need to have serious investment in that. And he's working with the private sector, in particular superannuation funds, to bring those trillions of dollars of assets into the housing market to make sure that everyone in Australia gets a decent house. Oh. What's wrong with that? 